Yves Saint Laurent. Hello, welcome to uh, The Flick. We are all dressed very fashionably today, <laughs> as usual, for our discussion of Yves Saint Laurent, one of two Yves Saint Laurent biopics coming out this year. Christy Alonzo, the always stylish Amy Nicholson from LA Weekly is here hanging out with us today. And um, you and I are going to talk about it. You're going to describe it. Yeah. Just like you said, the first of two uh, YSL biopics we get this year. Uh, uh, Pierre Nene? Nene. Nene. Oh, God. I actually looked it up. I, I watched some interview in French with him where they said his name. It sounds ah. vaguely insulting in the English. Um, Nene. <laughs> stars as the legendary fashion designer. Uh, we see him go from being a, uh, a teenager drawing sketches of dresses in his house in Algeria to becoming the uh, creative director of the house of Dior and then branching out and starting his own uh, multi-million dollar label and along the way uh, he falls in love with his business partner Pierre Berger and does a lot of cocaine. Take a look. <laughs> So this is sort of a formulaic by the numbers biopic, right? It, it, much. it goes through the important moments in his life, you know, him being appointed artistic director at Dior at age 21 and falling in love and like creating the Mondrian inspired color block dress yeah. and all the things we know from him. Um, Pierre Nene looks a lot like him. Yes, got the nose and everything. The nose and he's got the lanky frame and the glasses and so that is helpful. The clothes are great. A lot sure. of the actual clothes are on loan from Yves Saint Laurent and Pierre Berger's foundations, because they can only be used for like a few hours at a time because of the actual addresses. Yeah, of the two <laughs> movies, this is the one that's sort of uh, the approved one. Oh. Like this is the one that Berger signed off on, and so this is the you know the other one is sort of the renegade production. Well, I look forward to that one because yeah. that will be more fun, I guess. This is I very suspect. safe and very tasteful. I mean, I have to say, uh, what's wrong with this movie isn't that it's that it's too whitewashed. I mean, he's you know there's there's a lot of cocaine and there's a lot of you know sleeping around with other people and backstabbing and betrayal and whatnot. And so I didn't feel like they were. It's, this isn't like a hagiography. But what it is, though, is who was this guy? Mm -hmm. You know, you, he just suddenly becomes he's this young prodigy who wham makes it into like the biggest couture house on earth. How? Why? Who did he know? How did that process work? He put that cool white sash on the black cocktail dress. <laughs> Et voila! Exactly. <laughs> you know, we don't ever get an idea of what inspired him, right. apart from he literally pulls a book on Mondrian off the shelf, oh, yeah. opens it up, and makes a color block dress. But that's, that's the closest <laughs> we get to any sort of aha moment, you know? And the, the, the tricky thing about biopics of artists is, you know, yes, we all know the results. We all know the painting or the novel or the dresses or whatever. But what you, what we need to know is a, a clue as to how they got there. You know, we meet some of his muses. Lulu de la Falaise is a character in Betty Catru, not uh, Catherine Deneuve, yeah. oddly enough. Um, but the, but we don't ever see any interactions with them where he sees them do or say something where that inspires him to then. I, I just, I, I just, I went away not knowing any more about his actual creative process than I went in. I didn't understand him either creatively or personally. Like he treats Pierre Berger pretty terribly, right? And Pierre Berger does nothing but like protect him, probably overprotect him. Does you Saint Laurent feel bad about running around with like hot younger men and doing a lot of coke and having a lot, a lot of anonymous gay sex with them? How does he feel about any process of his life? It's like. Here he's young on Fonterie. Here he is doing a lot of drugs. Here he's about to collapse backstage at a fashion show. But who is he in, you know, besides the work? Right. How does he feel about anything in his life? Who and knows? And the movie you know. ends in 1976, even though he lived until 2008, right. with this great fashion show. But it's not like the fashion show that changed everything or that, you know, 
whatever. It's just, I mean, it's like the fourth fashion show in the movie. The movie just ends. And the movie just stops. <laughs> you're like, well, then what happened? You know, I, yeah, it just felt very arbitrarily put together. I liked um, Charlotte Le Bon as, what was her name, Victoire. Victoire, His yes. early model and muse. Right. She's, she's very cute and perky, and they have like a flirty, sassy thing going there. But, um, yeah, good performances. Yeah, it, it, kinda, it, it, kinda it's kind of shallow. Tastefully done. If you want to go look at the dresses, you know, dresses are pretty. Some people go to movies to look at the purses and the lamps, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, did it inspire you to do anything about your fashion the way that like Coco before <laughs> Chanel did? No, because after Coco Clearly. before Chanel, I was okay. like, I want to wear little white collars all the time. Uh, I have to do a lot more cocaine. Apparently, <laughs> is what I learned. And fuck more <laughs> random guys. Dave would love that. Okay, so what's your number? I gave it a five point eight. I'm a five point four. So we're at five point six. It is at four. 48% on the tomato meter. So I think it's just what, like New York and LA this weekend? And then expanding, yeah. And it goes wider. So, oh, actually, it opened It opened yesterday. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it opened right. on Wednesday, so right. it's out. If you are in a city where it's playing, you could see it if you so chose, but you don't have to. Bye.